Do, do, do. Okay, let's see. Testing, testing. Testing. Okay. Um, checking if it's showing up. Let's see. Am I live? Yes, I am. Um, yep, I am. Okay, let me do something. One moment. Sending this to some friends. God damn you. Where were we? Do, 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 do. All right, let's get started on this. Even though I don't have any viewers on or any of that stuff, all right, let's get started on this whole live stream that I started this for. Okay, so the discussion is basically Palestine. What the debunking of myths about palestine basically i'm going to go through some myths that i've been hearing all the damn time about palestine every single time i know right so let's get into a little bit of historical context context okay so basically what is palestine palestine is the land that is currently um, occupied by the state of Israel. Oh wait, the state of isn't real because I do not recognize it as a real place. I don't recognize it as a state. I don't recognize it as a nation. It is an occupying power that is occupying and oppressing and genociding the Palestinian people and has installed a system of apartheid in the region on the land that we know as Palestine. So we are going to go through some common myths and conceptions that basically that this is a conflict between Jews and Muslims. Untrue, completely untrue. Myth number one, untrue. It's not a conflict between Jews and Muslims because one, Judaism is a religion that says thou shall not kill. Judaism is not a nationalistic religion that is off the basis of the creation of a state. It is not a religion based on that. Zionism is what it's called. Zionism is what is the main ideology of the state of Israel, where they are a nationalistic ideology that is built on mil on war, slaughter, plundering, raping, and genocide. That is the ideology, a nationalistic ideology to create a state. That's what Zionism is. It is a nationalistic ideology that defies the Torah in every shape or form. It is a anti-Semitic ideology. Next, next, Pal they aren't just going for Muslims. They're also going after Palestinian Jews, Palestinian Christians as well. And the biggest minority in Palestine are Christians which they are bombing the ever living crap out of every single damn day of the week. And I'm gonna get censored for this as usual because you know, they love censoring people. <sighs> but this is what 
That's one myth. Myth number two, the 1937 partition plan, which gave, supposedly gave 80% of the land to Palestinians and 20% of the land to, um, to the isn't really, is not really. So that plan is a bunch of BS because if you actually look deep into it, so we're giving them 20% of the fertile, the fertile, nice, the fertile land, the land with the most water, the fertile urban, the fertile urban land, which was the 20% that was supposed to be given up. While the 80% would have just been uninhabitable and barren and complete desert. That's why the Palestinians rejected that plan, the plan that supposedly gave them 80% of their land back. It wouldn't. It would give them the, it would make them worse off too. Next. Oh, Israel's not occupying um, Gaza. Israel's not occupying Gaza. We withdrew in 2005. Untrue. Completely untrue. Because now they're invading Gaza and they're currently trying to surround Gaza City. The Gaza Strip, where basically they suppo- they occupied in 2000, they withdrew their occupation in 2005. So if that's the case that the occupation is gone and all that stuff and that they let they allowed them to basically create their own economy be able to like do their own stuff okay if that's supposedly the case and talking about oh but then they chose to basically take weapons and have them come have weapons shipped to them from iran okay so how would that happen if one they are not even allowed to make a port if they are not even allowed to have an airport whatsoever how the hell does that work okay and then how come you can't bear how come people in gaza can barely get out of there how come it's the it's considered the largest open air prison how come you can't even get out of there unless you have special permits you can't even get out through egypt too and how come they're not even allowed to do that? How come they're not even allowed to have a port or even have an airport whatsoever or any form of commerce? Even before Hamas even before Hamas got elected in Gaza, how come they didn't even allow them to even still have a port? To even have a port in the first place or an airport? Makes no sense. Oh, next one. The hospital where they claim that hospital, the hospital which was basically home to one of the oldest churches ever. Yeah. Um, let's see. Where they say that oh, it was a Hamas missile that basically um boomeranged and all that stuff. Oh yeah, that too. That supposedly boomeranged back to the hospital and supposedly the hamas uh, rocket is the reason why the hospital got destroyed that is completely false and untrue that is completely false that is untrue from all measures because one the laws of physics literally that would violate the laws of physics that will completely violate the laws of physics how would a missile be able to go all the way from the air from supposedly a cemetery that is like two or three miles away from the hospital. How would a, a rocket be able to go all the way up to that air, up to the air, and then supposedly boomerang all the way back three miles away from the original, the supposedly original site where the rocket was launched back to a hospital caused so much carnage. And also then they try saying, oh, because there's no crater in there. When literally they originally claimed it, they were literally even bombing the communication towers of the hospital. And they even said, oh, yeah, leave because we're going to bomb it. We're going to bomb it. We're going to bomb the hospital. We're going to bomb the hospital. So instead, they basically lie about it. They completely 
lie about it entirely. Just completely lie. So they claim that so they claim that literally go it boomeranged and basically caused so much carnage. A rocket like that would not cause that much carnage, first and foremost. A rocket would not be able to cause that much carnage. A Hamas rocket would not be able to cause it. An Israeli missile would be able to cause it. Because one, they literally use the Gaza Strip as a way of literally testing weapons. The go- The other thing too is, next, they literally claimed that, they originally claimed it, military officials claimed that. They claimed they bombed it before they changed up their statement. Then the supposed, oh, video tape, uh, the audio recording of Moss and all that stuff, that was proven untrue by Al Jazeera journalists and independent Arab journalists because literally those Arab accents were not even Arab accents. They had literally, they were basically staged. They staged the whole accents. Then they claimed there was underground Hamas tone. Okay. And then the other thing is myth number, um, I think we're in, I think we're in five. Myth number five. Oh, we're bombing. They're using human shields. They're using human shields. The human shields argument. Or that basically they have underground tunnels under civilian buildings. Okay. So how would bombing them work? How would bombing them be able to stop these underground tunnels when they are underground and can't even be affected by bombs? By bombing literally civilian pl- like civilian um, areas like grocery stores, hospitals, residential buildings. How would that work? How would you destroy supposedly underground Hamas tunnels? And also, where's this evidence of Hamas tunnels? Oh wait, because they have none, because they forge it. Next myth, myth number six, 40 babies being you know what. That is a com- that was completely untrue because one, the journalist that complete that claimed it literally withdrew her claim because she could not get it verified by the IDF. The IDF was refusing to send them evidence and verify the supposed 40 babies claim. Next, we have seen no evidence of such. There was no evidence. No evidence whatsoever. They have not even shown evidence of any babies. Next myth. Oh, and then independent journalists indep- isn't real will not survive in my lifetime. These settlers know this stuff. We hit the fan and we leave in the Libyatin region. Okay. Next, myth number six. I think we're in myth number seven, actually. Myth number seven. That, oh, that concert, oh, all those people at the concert were killed and raped and murdered. No, untrue. Completely untrue. Actually, they are hostages. They are literal hostages. The other thing that goes along with that myth, too, is that Hamas won't release the hostages. They said, yeah, we will release the hostages unless you give us this list of Palestinians that you have that you have um, in your prisons and in your detention camps and all that stuff. Israel completely refused and even the families of the hostages condemned them. There was even one of the hostages that was released that said this, that don't worry, I won't hurt you, I'm Muslim. Or when one of the hostages was released talking about the great treatment she actually had. So please tell me how's that going to work? How does that work? 
how is that supposedly happening if they're supposedly killing all these people and killing all them and refusing to release the hostages? And then you're not even trying to get the hostages. Instead, you're literally carpet bombing the spot where these, where you see that the spot where they have the hostages. How's that going to bring them back? It's not. It's not going to bring them back. It's not going to bring them into your custody. Instead, you're just making the problem worse. Myth number eight. We need to bomb this place so we can get rid of Hamas once and for all. Okay. And then you're just radicalizing every single member to join Hamas. You're just ra radicalizing more and more and more people. Every one Hamas member you kill, 10 more come back. Then they accuse Ham then they can accuse Hamas of parading a German tourist dead body after attacking concert. And that was later proven that the tourist was fine and in the hospital with minor injuries. I think so. I don't I don't remember. But then next myth. Back to the myth I was talking about. Yeah, it won't stop the problem. It will just make it worse. Next myth, myth number eight. <sighs> Excuse me. Sorry. Um, back to this. Um, next myth. That. Oh, Israel's the large is the only democracy in the Middle East. Completely untrue. 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 That is not. Hi. That is completely untrue. It is not the only democracy in the Middle East. That is completely untrue. And oh, we support gay rights there. It's the only uh, place in the Middle East that supports gay rights. Untrue as well. Very much untrue as well. Because literally, one, it still hasn't legalized gay marriage whatsoever. Has never legalized gay marriage. Transgender rights? Mm -mm. Nope. Mm -mm. Untrue. Continuing on with that, continue off their lies as well that these Zionists will tell you. Next, democracy? Completely untrue. It is literally a dictatorship. It is a dictatorship. The whole bourgeois democracy that they show you there is a complete lie because literally the same to say that it's the okay let's look at it from a bourgeois point the only democracy in the middle east untrue because then you also have lebanon syria iraq they and yeah you have those three nations that all vote all three of them have elections oh as well as turkey all vote Isn't real is definitely a, a sham of a settler colonial state. True. Next. Next myth. Myth number 10. That's where we are. Myth number 10. That, oh, the Israelis are the ancient descendants of the, the um, ancient Israelis back in the kingdom of Judea. Untrue. Untrue. How can we prove this? Because most of the descendants of the ancient Israelis are actually Palestinians, making them Semitic, making them Semitic people. To basically avoid getting persecuted or killed, they literally were offered, they literally told these provinces under um, the caliphates that if you convert to Islam, we will give you lower taxes and we will give you better rights and better treatment. They converted to Islam and basically got less taxes and better treatment. So their descendants kept doing that over and over for centuries where literally it was enshrined in their family history. That's how they literally survived. That's how the kingdom, how the people of the former kingdom of Judea survived. That too, that too, that too. That's what I was also going to bring up. Wait, so yeah, a majority, and also the other thing too, 
is they never prove this whatsoever that they that these is not realies are the original people of the land. They never do prove that. They never do. Because here's the thing. You can't get a DNA test there. You can't get an ancestry test there unless you go through a bunch, a bunch, and bunch of tech, uh, checkpoints. You can't get a DNA test. You can only get one uh, government approved DNA test. I wonder why. I wonder why you can't get those. Can anyone explain to me? Oh yeah, because there are a bunch of Europeans too. Next, the famous um, is not really, it's like Benjamin Netanyahu and um, Gal Gadat, whatever her name is, that fascist. You know, their family is actually from Poland and Lithuania. They changed their last names, literally changed their last names to make them sound Hebrew. Have you ever thought about that? Next, back to myth number one about back to myth number one about it all being um, this conflict between Jews and Muslims. It was not, never was, because Jews, Muslims, and Christians all lived together under the same roof. They actually did. Jerusalem was a shared city because it had religious significance with all three of the major Abrahamic religions. Because we get into this discussion about religion and all this other stuff, which um, none of these three Abrahamic religions I believe, and I don't think most of my audience here believes. Some, some do, I bet. But mm, the other thing too is Myth number seven is that, oh wait, myth number 11 is that literally um, they use the basis of religion as a reason to lay claim to the area. And that their claims are verified based off their religion, untrue. Because they're not verified based off the re religion. Because Palestinians justify their indigeneity not via religion, they justify it for having family lineages that go on and on and on and on and on and on all the way from the past, back in ancient times of the so of the kingdom of Judea. And how do I know this? Because I met Palestinians that told me this shit. That's why. The thing is, they don't literally argue by saying that literally, oh, um, our religion is the basis for why we supposedly have claim to this land. No, you don't. You don't have any claim to that land. These is not real East don't have any claim to that land. Because it was never theirs. It was never theirs. Next one. Myth number 12. Gaza is not an open air prison. Oh, Israel's just fighting terrorists. No, they're not. No, they're not. Absolutely not, because they use that plate. They literally bomb places where Hamas is not even there, like in the West Bank as well. They are destroy. They are literally cutting off food, water, electricity, and everything. They raided a hospital, which put all the patients in the ICU, even including babies, all murdered. And next, the other thing as well is most of them Palestinians in Gaza are at the at least the age of 16. Next, the idea of the Zionist state was originated not from claiming that isn't real was but rather any piece of land even if it was taken even if it would take part in settler colonialism. The Zionists proposed ideas of the concept of the promised land that too. At one point, Kenya and Uganda used would have been where modern day isn't real would have been. The British actually supported this until um, the white settlers there were like, "Oh no, you can't have this. Mm -mm. Nope, 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 nope." Because then you're displacing us as well. 
Yep, they also even claimed parts of the Australian desert. That too. They they had actually multiple places that they wanted to go. Ethiopia was one of them. Ethiopia there was one of them. They wanted to go into Ethiopia. Crazy, right? And some of these Zionists admit that this is not even their land. That this is not even their land. First and foremost, case in point, the Zionist soldier, uh, I'm talking about name a president from their country. Oh, name a president from this flag, from which points to Palestinian flag, and then we'll leave their country. So they just admit that this is not their land. Make it make sense. Make it fucking make sense. I'm telling you, make it make sense, dog. Make it make sense. Oh, wait, because it doesn't. It doesn't. Next. Oh, this is a conflict. Untrue, because one side has, like, less than 2,000 men in its military. It doesn't really have much of a standing army. Has If it even did have a standing army, it only has 2,000 people in it. Doesn't even have a air force, a navy, or um, an intelligence agency, or really much of a ministry of defense or military bases. What's even crazy is when it came to Jews wanting to claim parts of the Aussie deserts against the will of the native populations, the AMF weirdly came to the defense of the Australian natives. Crazy, right? Crazy? Yep, very much crazy. The other part. Continuing on with this. That, oh, this is a... God, damn. Oh, that kind of, that kind of explains it because they would see any Jews as inferior and all that other stuff. Continuing on with this as well is then next the other thing is myth the next myth they had no um, involvement in the Sabra and Shatil massacre. Um, completely untrue. They actually had so much involvement that they literally boxed up all the Palestinians and one all the Palestinian like, refugees in Lebanon in one place and then literally allowed this right-wing christian militia fascist militia in there to basically slaughter and murder everyone luckily some people survive but without but not without their dignity and their innocence raped killed slaughtered all that just like butchered like straight up butchered and then the other thing, too, is that the defense minister resigned, too. Next, if Hamas gave up the hostages, there would be peace in the Middle East. <sighs> untrue. Untrue. Because this war started way before Hamas. This before Hamas existed. This whole, not a war, this whole genocide, too started way before Hamas even existed. And even if they gave up all the hostages, they're not gonna stop the bombing. They're not gonna stop the bombing. They're not gonna stop the genocide. They're not gonna stop the killing of innocent Palestinians left and right. They're not gonna stop. They're not gonna stop until every single Palestinian is expelled or dead. To where they can expand and expand and expand and expand. Next myth. The Zionists are peaceful. Israelis are peaceful. No, they're not. Fuck that. They talk about we should kill all um, Palestinians, Nakba 2.0. Nakba 2.0. That we should carpet bomb them, kill all the Arabs. All that. 
every single thing. Talking about we should rape them all, murder them. Even some former soldiers were talking about doing all, literally laughing at the fact that they did all that stuff. Oh, and then they were like kicking them out of their homes and everything, and then basically just take them over. And the biggest example of this was the first woman prime minister of Israel, Goldemir. Goldemir was the fourth um, prime minister of the state of Israel. And how she came into the place, she actually admits that the place was called Palestine and that she would have been a Palestinian. She took a Palestinian man's home and claimed it as her own, kicked them out, locked his whole family out, and took it. Next, in 1984, um, we're going to go with Gigi Hadid's father, Mohammed Hadid, if that's his name correctly. So his family is from Haifa. Haifa, big Palestinian city with, the huge, with one of the hugest ports. Let me look for it in a map. Haifa, Haifa, Haifa. Ah, yes, yes, near the course. Near the, near the coast. Okay. So Haifa. Oh, hi. Continue on oh, Haifa. So his family actually was a part of the cre creation of the port in Haifa. And they saw that, hey, we're refugees from World War II. We're coming over here um, to basically start a new life. So his family literally invited um, some Jewish settlers to their home. And this is when he was in his mother's um, uterus at the time. And he was just about to be born. He, his mother gives birth at the hospital and everything. And she goes um, back to the house. And turns out she's locked out. The settlers locked her out of her own ha of their own house while literally he's carrying literally her, her son. And saying, let me in, let me back in, let me back in. I'm trying, like, I need shelter for me and my baby and all that stuff. They were like, nope, this is our house now. You can go. This is our house now. Literally just took it with a snap of the fingers like that. They're like, fuck you, we're taking this. This is our land now, so, yep. Next. If you don't support Israel, you're anti-Semitic. Untrue. Because why? Because Palestinians are Semitic. They are Semitic. They are Semitic people. Semitic people. They are literally Semitic people. They're not. The is isn't really is aren't Semitic. They're not. One, they can't even prove that either whatsoever. And next saying um isn't real is a Jewish state. No, it's not. Not all Jews support it. Not all Jews recognize the state of Israel. And basically, the state of Israel is an anti-Semitic state that violates the Torah. Yeah, they are anti-Semites. Because literally, isn't really are anti-Semites. That's the other thing, too. And then the other thing they leave out as well is like, okay, let's say I claim I'm Jewish and all that stuff. I'll be given a house, a passport, and everything. And I'll get a free ticket to isn't real. But a Palestinian that's been living there for years and years and years and years and years can't do basic shit. Like, let's say you live near, like, the coast. You can't even fish if you, have, if you don't have the special permit. You can't even have a home unless you have a special permit. You can't even leave if you have a special permit. Was it meant to be a Jewish state? That it's a state that claims to be governed by an ethno religion of Judaism, aka Zionism. 
they they wanted they mostly claim this land they were going to claim any part of the land and then they're going to claim it as like this jewish homeland and all this other stuff but really it's a it's literally just a nationalistic ideology it's not really it basically claims to be a part of judaism and trying in judaism when it's not a part of Judaism, instead it's a nationalistic ideology that wants to claim a certain piece of land and then claim that they are decolonizing the area and claiming that this is their land and that basically they are returning home because they are supposedly the indigenous people of that land. Next part. What's my dog yapping about? Uh, yes, yeah. All right. Um, next part is that um, Palestinians are to blame for this as well. No, they're not. They were completely innocent. They literally used to live in harmony as well with the other religious groups as well. Some of them were even a part of those religious groups as well. And that's the other thing. Palestinians are not to blame whatsoever. They are not to blame by getting invaded, slaughtered, kicked out of their homes, raped, murdered, displaced, left and right. Next myth. Oh, the, the foundation of the, the foundation of the state of Israel was peaceful and all that stuff. No, not true, because if it was, they wouldn't have called it the Nakba, which mean, which basically means like a dark day. It was a dark time, where literally all of them were forced out of their homes with the barrel of the gun and pushed into different areas, left and right. Like straight up, different areas. Like, literally, these certain areas, West Bank and Gaza. And they kept pushing, 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 pushing until they literally held them off right there. And then they start taking over land and more land. And then, talk, and there's like this. Excuse me, Jesus Christ. Sorry. Then they claim that they, and then they're claiming that land and all that stuff. And Israel's literally paying people to actually move into them settlements. They're literally paying people and getting them food, water, electricity, and everything to move it to basically take homes and basically make them settlements. That's the other thing. Next myth. Oh, Israel, um, you we can't do anything. We can't do anything. Yeah, we can. Yeah, we can. We can do a lot of things to stop this. We can do a lot of things. We can basically um, donate to organizations that help out Gaza. We can spread media awareness as much as possible, share as much as possible protests every single day of the damn week 24 7 7 every minute every hour every second till our voice to our voices are heard they have even done this in the bay area of california where they literally in the san francisco bay they literally took over a whole bridge some of them were also chasing delaying ships full of weapons from going from literally leaving their ports. You can do that. You can do that. Some of the indigenous people in the state of Washington and the west coast of Turtle Island have literally been doing that. You can also start boycotting. Boycotting uh, businesses like McDonald's, Starbucks, for example, Burger King. There is a whole bunch of businesses you can find that um, 
that support isn't real and some that don't support isn't real like for example um like let's say this uh beauty brand called huda beauty does not support isn't real for one moment doesn't support it because one it's founded by someone who literally lives in dubai um the brand that makes like the silk therapy hair products they're actually founded by palestinians who use olive oil in those products yeah you can basically spread awareness boycott and all that stuff and also look at the tactics that we also use to basically end the to basically almost completely end the apartheid in South Africa and in Zimbabwe. You can look up those tactics. We can do something. That's the other thing. We can. We can organize, we can protest, we can go on a national strike. We can do all that. There are protests that are happening left and right across the nation and across the world in favor of Palestine. There's a, mu a bunch of things you can do. And I suggest you do them. Start boycotting. Start boycotting. Next, the other myth. If Israel doesn't exist, then basically everything will be over. No. Because the United States will come in and create their own Israel. They literally said, Joe Biden even said himself that he would, if, the, if Israel doesn't exist today, we will come in there and we will create our own Israel. Like literally said, we will create our own Israel. They literally said that. We will come in and create our own Israel. Next, last one. From the river to the seas, Palestine will be free, free means genocide and eating people off their land. Untrue. No, it means ending the apartheid, the occupation, and the whole state of Israel and dismantling it entirely for the creation of a Palestinian state where all people living in the area can live as one in peace and harmony. And the other thing, too, is what is also a narrative myth is that, oh, the whole world supports Israel. No, they don't. They don't. Because we see nations left and right, bourgeois nations, capitalist nations left and right, literally going like, yeah, that's too far. We can't do that. And they're withdrawing, withdrawing aid, withdrawing support, and all that stuff. Some even went as far to basically expel some ambassadors as well. But that's symbolic. I want destruction. I want complete and utter destruction. I don't want see cease fire no, i don't want to cease fire i want full-on resistance until i don't see israel in my in my lifetime i want to see that before i die before i leave this earth and leave this planet i want the united states to no longer exist that i want turtle island to be free i want palestine to be free i want Cymru. Cornwall, Scotland, Ireland, all the oppressed nations around the world to be free. I want that. I want to live in a world, in a classless, I want to see a classless, moneyless, stateless society.
come around. I want to see that. I want to see an end to settler colonialism. I want to see an end to that. I want to see the end of revisionism. I want to see the end of the violence under capitalism and fascism. I want to see the end to that. Complete, total end. That's why I say from the river to the seas, Palestine will be free. Thank you all for listening. Bye. It was nice seeing y'all.